and one minute. So if you want to start actually uh, at four, I can. Yeah. <clears throat> Because the majority of member towns must be represented uh, by, by, by vote stick and other. So, right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Was, so, 26 total votes, uh, and Bennington is eight of them, you know. So, yeah. There is. We need 30, 13 votes with the people here. So, eight. All right, it's uh, 4 p.m. on April 13th. Uh, I'd like to call a meeting of the Bennington County Solid Waste uh, Alliance together. Um, first order of business will be to uh, accept the minutes from our last meeting, which was February 9th. We have a motion to pardon me. I move we accept the minutes. Second. Okay, we have a second. Any uh changes, additions, modifications, corrections, anything? All right, all in favor of accepting the minutes, say aye. 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 Okay. Here it is. Okay. We'll turn this <clears throat> over to Scott, which we welcome for First meeting, his first meeting. Hello, everyone. Nice to uh, nice to uh, e meet you or, or meet you in person here for the first time. Um, I've met with a couple of folks here, but not everyone. I uh, hope to get to know you all soon. Um, so, um, just wanted to uh, start. There's a I, I sent out an agenda earlier. Um, the uh, order of operations is, of course, the introductions, and then we're going to talk about household hazardous waste. Um, then the permanent hazardous waste facility, compost bin sales, uh, the asphalt shingles collection, uh, public collection containers and food scraps, um, the North Shire recycling uh, issue, uh, sticker fee issue, and um, possible polystyrene program. And public comments. Is there any other uh, items that anyone wishes to add to the agenda before we or to talk about? I didn't put in a new business sort of setup. Oh, it's a, oh, I see it. Agenda here for it. Okay, great. Uh, in that regard, I guess we'll just get started then talking about the um, uh, household waste events. Uh, as you guys are aware, we have three household waste events coming up this summer. Uh, the first is coming up very shortly in less than one month in Bennington on May 7th. Um, then we're going to have one in Reedsboro on July 23rd and another one in uh, Dorset on September 17th. Uh, all the events are going to be running from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, and uh, we'll be using U.S. Ecology again to be our uh, vendor to pick up goods. Um, Paula has been going around doing promotions. She's put um, flyers up at all the town halls and has been around the whole county. Um, all the other public boxes, including the ones at Sandgate that are um, not on any maps. Um, bulletin boards are have info on them. And um, we also have ads coming up in the Manchester Journal, the Bennington Banner, and the Berkshire Eagle, um, specifically for the May 7th event. And then we have ads queued up as well for the other events. Uh, Paula is also working on getting um you know local cable access coverage and some coverage in local radio as well um everything looks to be in order right now we've got the forklift company you know dropping a forklift and um the um yeah casell is dropping off a container um i haven't been particularly uh i mean i haven't been to an event like this before so i've been leaning very heavily on uh, paula and her experience to help guide me as to what's going on uh, but we're in good shape. Uh, we're meeting with uh, Man Anthony Schools uh, on Wednesday next week to do a walkthrough uh, for two weeks before the event. And um, yeah, looks like we're we're going to be all set. So um, I know that there is a uh, some 
there's a tradition of folks from this board serving um, as well, you know, uh, on, on the day of um, the event to help us out. So I just want to uh, make sure that that's, you know, on the table as well and, and, to, and to, to get an idea as to who's going to be around for this first event and then who might also be able to help us out with the, with the other events during the year. Pandemic uh, comment. Also, uh, May 7th happens to be Green Up Day, and I know um, I've been involved in that with our town as well as I think the Ali has it was also has its waste events too. So I'm gonna have to kind of split my time there and figure that one out. But uh, just as a reminder, that is Green Up Day for, for the state of Vermont. Yeah, I think from now on we really need to keep away from the first Saturday in May. Yeah, yeah. We, we had this we had this problem several years ago. We we got away from it and then we just jumped there. So let's not do that again, if you would please. All right. Well, the hope is that next year we will have the hazardous uh, waste facility yeah, operational, and we will not have to have them. But um, that would be excellent. Yeah, that is that is the. Hope. We'll, we'll, we can talk about that more when we get to the uh, facility. Um, so. Uh, so do we do we know who's gonna volunteer then for these for this first event? Is uh so Dixie you there. will be around before half the day. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll be willing to uh volunteer for the Bennington event as well. Great. Thank you, Stu. I'm not gonna be able to make it. No, okay. Yeah, we're done it. We're, we're running on a two man thing. You have to have two men to run this transfer station. So okay. Paula? Yes, Nancy. I will uh, I will be available for the July 23rd in Reedsboro, possibly May 7th, but I'll contact you a couple days before. Sure. May 7th. Great. We appreciate it. It was fun uh, last note, year. Yeah. Also, one note is that um, we are not doing batteries this year. Yeah. That took a huge amount of effort. And <laughs> <laughs> Thank God for that. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, and also as a reminder, we're no longer accepting fluorescent bulbs of any kind at, at household hazardous waste collection events as our vendor US Ecology will not collect them. So okay. we just they keep them in the car, basically. Batteries are fine. We'll just leave, <clears throat> leave them for US Ecology to take them out of the vehicles. We won't be worried about the two step process of collecting them at the stop sign like we did in the past. That's wonderful. So they yeah. will take the batteries. Yes, yeah, they, they normally do, but we would pack them up. Right. And them. now we're just going to have them do it because less manpower than us doing it. So them to do it. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay, then. Uh, so since that's all set, uh, next step is to talk about the uh, construction of a permanent household hazardous waste facility. Um, so uh, we have had a little bit of a setback related to this and the plan initially that Michael had set out before I arrived. Um, he put together a request for proposals and sent them out to a number of, uh, or rather he had, um, in his absence, um, staff, other staff at BCRC, um, specifically uh, Jim Henderson, uh, you know, took his RFP and then um, solicited around for vendors uh, to try to get some uh some some bids on the area uh there was a couple of um conversations we had with people who did this sort of thing uh in you know sort of at the national level but they were it was a little bit too small scale for them and uh and when when we approached local engineering firms uh there was kind of little interest because i think they, they they felt that the, the scope was was potentially too big or that they might need some kind of a specialist uh to make sure that things were up to code and doing things like that. So um, it's it, it's in this sort of a strange uh, intermediary here. Um, but we have, uh, you know, I, I have had interest and I have been talking to MSK about it. Um, but the thing is, effectively, there, there, there was a little too much in the RFP that we don't actually need to have done. Uh, the two main features of the RFP, uh, you know, he had things like, installing a permanent bathroom and things like that in the facility and there's no plumbing at the transfer station or anything like that so that would cost bring costs way up um and he also wanted to specifically convert the existing building there into um into the facility and 
Um, since I've been here, I've gone around and I, I visited the Brattleboro um, collection facility and I've had conversations with the folks up in Springfield who are constructing a facility now and uh, I've, uh, I've gotten maps and plans for what they put together up in Rutland. And, uh, and it really looks like that's too small of a, of a footprint for, for what, we, what, we're, what we're probably gonna need just to have that one uh, brick building, uh, sorry, one um, block building put together. So, um, you know, what, what the Rattleboro uh, thing is, it's a, it's a trailer that was a prefabricated um, chemical storage facility constructed by a company that specializes in um, chemical storage facilities. And they just, you know, had it shipped in from North Carolina and dropped it off. Um, you know, it's a it's a trailer that that goes on effectively just a concrete pad on the site. Um, I've been uh, talking to MSK about that as well, and uh, you know, they did say that there would be some costs uh, leveling out the site. You know, pouring the concrete pad, uh, getting that stuff done, but you know, that that, that is a little more reasonable. Um, and there are three um, companies that I've been uh, in conversations with who create prefabricated units, um, just right U.S. Chemical Storage and Safety Strategies Incorporated, that have all uh, you know been given sort of our general site plan, and um, I we're looking to kind of get a bids from them uh, right now. So we haven't gotten um, bids exactly yet, but you know the the actual facility, uh, you know when it gets dropped off, will probably be in the you know, forty to sixty thousand dollar range, um, uh, and it will be a thirty by seventy foot, um, thirty by seventy foot um, metal building um, that that will have uh, fire suppression and um, you know uh, everything sort of built into it, uh, fire prevention, spreading, etc., ventilation, everything that is sort of uh, necessary uh, built into it and already up to code. Um, and that is, uh, you know, so that that's effectively where we're moving forward with this. Uh, the costs for us, you know, are going to be, of course, preparing the site. Uh, one of the things I need to talk about the talk about to the uh, vendors is, you know, what do the units need uh, specifically? What do they need when it comes to ease of us um, loading and unloading product and having the um, whether it's a tractor trailer or whether it's a box truck, um, you know, having a company like U.S. Ecology come and do you know, uh, semi-regular pickups for us. Um, and we, you know, and uh, so we'll have to have that done. Uh, and then of course the actual thing is like creating the pad, preparing the site, uh, getting an electrician on site to, to hook it up because it does require um, some energy um, for the ventilation and um, a local fire protection company to arm the dry chemical suppression system that will be part of the trailer. So now those are the steps right now. And we're also hoping that it'll be uh, easy enough and quick enough to get this done because it is simply leveling out the site and pouring concrete that we will be able to have it active for next year without having to go through a bunch of hoops for construction. Um, of course, uh, and the, uh, the companies did say it takes about five or six months between the time when you order uh, the uh, prefabricated unit to when they can deliver it. So that's uh, that's where we're at. That, that, that's what we're looking at right now as far as the, the facility goes. How do they ship the 30 foot wide for the in sections? I mean, it has to be a yeah. yeah. piece of together. I mean, they, they, could, they could ship it in 215, but 215 by 70. Foot. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's what some of these uh, home trailers and stuff I see yeah. going, when I get in the interstates. So they can bring that up here. Right. That yeah. would be, I don't think that'd be a problem at all. Yeah. So, but we still do need to engage an engineering firm to come in and do site planning and stuff like that. And help us determine things like that we need to deal with the telephone pole that's that's right on the site, uh, whether that needs to be moved or whether we can get around it and things like that. So um, the other thing too is uh, we have to figure out who we're going to be able to bring in to do the um, leveling and the and the pouring of the pad. Uh, I don't know if that's something we want to try to um, go with private companies for. Or that's something we should reach out to town government uh, to try to work on. Um, I don't know if that's uh, is it worth talking to RJ Stu about that, or is that something we should um, just try to do privately? Well, no, I, I'm. I mean, we can we can certainly we have the equipment at the site. We could if if we should be able to do that relatively quickly, uh, and certainly pouring concrete 
a concrete pad is not rocket science. So I, I don't know why the town couldn't assist with that. Sure, and, and whatever the cost is, you know, we have it, we have construction costs built into the budget. Yeah. Um, in case people want to know, again, uh, between the state grant money and the pledges here from uh, the towns, um, you know, it's one hundred and sixteen thousand dollars total for the project, um, with uh, seventy thousand, you know, sixty nine thousand one hundred coming from the from the state, uh, and then you know, forty seven thousand uh, from from the um, BC uh, SWA uh, money there. So. Uh, if any, there should be some way to sort of uh, get everything yeah. together. Yeah, we we could count that as an in kind in kind payment, um, our as part of the town's portion. Um, remember, if we're going to bring a new structure on site, we're going to need to get a zoning permit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll have to work with the uh, with the you know town yeah. building commission to yeah. figure out how to do that too. But that's uh, that's why we need the engineers too to first come in and. Um, draft a site plan to submit to uh, the state and the local municipalities uh, for approval. Um, and then we need to figure out if any trees need to be removed or things like that, you know, uh, get all that done for the concrete pad and then just make sure the area is prepared in time for the delivery date of the uh, mobile unit. Okay. Sounds doable. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Yeah, that's, that's, these are metal buildings. They're metal buildings, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, I see that. I can see a problem with that. Yeah. They're about the size of a you know, shipping container, kind of. They look like a shipping well, container. A little bit bigger yeah. shipping container. Well, a little bigger than a shipping yeah. container. A little bigger than a shipping container. Yeah. I haven't seen a 70-footer yet. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's uh, yeah, that that would be that's the ideal size for a full uh, one. The one in um, Benning, the one in um, uh, Brattleboro is, 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 is smaller, for sure. Uh, and they have a box truck size too. So I'm going to get quotes, and then we'll we'll do what's best and what works best best in our budget. I'm, I'm thinking about when I was, yeah. at, I was at the Arlington, Virginia transfer station. And they just had those quants of that things, you know, like those garages, mm -hmm. five and parts on. Okay, this is hazardous material. This is you know, paint. This is whatever. It's crazy. I thought, how are they getting away with this? But they're huge. I I don't know. They they just do it. Yeah, and and I think some of the older places in Vermont kind of just taken over old buildings and done something similar without all the fire suppression, but it, you know, it is, it is fire suppression. Is, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it was nuts. I looked at it, I started laughing. My daughter, my daughter in law said, What's wrong? I told her, she's kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no, it was bad. Uh, okay, so uh, so that's that item. Uh, next is uh, compost bin sales. Um, so we've uh, we've ordered uh, goods again. Oh, Martha Martha has joined us. Hello, and uh, who's the individual who called in eight zero two three seven five five one nine five? Okay, probably have a public interview. Great. Um, so um, so we've uh, got. Uh, 75 of the green cones coming in this year, which is, uh, those are solar digesters. And we have 72 compost bins uh, coming in this year as well. Um, what we plan to do this year is we plan to organize our sales uh, through the website. Uh, we have a recently constructed website uh, and we have a good relationship with the web developers and uh, it wasn't very much to, to add a um, store page, you know, uh, to, the, uh, to the system. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be collecting everything, you know, only letting people pay through credit card purchases uh, through the website or uh, in the case of uh, when Paul is at farmer's markets or things like that, uh, we have a uh, a swipe, a uh, card swipe, like, you know, just like a vendor would have at a farmer's market uh, that'll allow all the collect, all the, all the sales to happen uh, either right there on site or, or in advance, you know, for people to come and pick up at the website. So um, what we're doing is, um, uh, yeah, the that plus a, a couple of extra buckets and some on some overstock from previous years um, will all be up on the website and ready for sale, and we'll we'll see how things go. Um, the there we're lucky that they're uh, being shipped to Abacus Automation for us, so Dixie's volunteered some of his private business space for us to use, which is great. Um, I emailed you today, but clearly you were in New Hampshire this morning, so you didn't see it, but. 
Um, we talked about potentially moving up the date. We had originally gotten, um, we had originally asked for them to be uh, shipped at the end of June, but uh, after Paul and I had a conversation, we figured composting season probably starts a little before that and people getting into gardening and everything, we want to try to try to push them earlier if possible. So if it's all right with Dixie, we'll probably. probably push it up to June 6th. That, that's when the other, uh, that's when the vendors said they could uh, ship earlier in the month. And then uh, we'll probably have the pickup of the um, items, you know, during uh, around June 11th uh, through 15th. Um, and we'll, we'll organize the dates and the time specifically yeah, for that. Yeah, uh, but, but, yeah, times for pickup and everything with you guys that month. Um, are there any other questions about that? This is an add-on. We're also going to do early promotion at the Household Hazardous Waste Collection event by giving flyers to all the cars that come through um, with a QR code so they can scan it and get right onto the website, hopefully all the ducks line up, um, to be able to place an order right then and there. Just, and then we can try to get as much sell-through as possible in advance of any promotion that we do outside of that. Yeah, and, and we're selling them for good prices because we're selling them, you know, at cost plus just a little bit extra to cover the PayPal transaction fees and, uh, and state taxes and stuff. So the green cones are $100 cheaper when, we, when you buy them through us than if you bought them at Home Depot or something. And the uh, compo backyard composters, uh, you know, 80 or $90 cheaper to, to buy it through us. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's a good benefit for the public to try to get them to shift to composting. All right, any questions about that? We good? All right, um, next is uh, asphalt shingles collection. Um, so the uh, the long and the short of this is, uh, I, I was a little confused about what was going on with this uh, when I first arrived. Um, I had uh, gotten kind of a message from uh, some sort of mixed messaging that the board wasn't uh, very confident with, with going forward to building this. And also the state has changed sort of the rules about asphalt shingle collection and whether or not it's going to be mandatory back and forth uh, a few times uh, over the last year or so. So, so right now um, it, it appears that they have all, they have postponed the requirement for um, for local um, solid waste alliance type entity uh, entities to uh, have uh, asphalt shingle collection. Um, it was originally supposed to be summer of next year as a requirement and groups like us were getting a, a small grant from the from the state to do it but uh to, to to basically put containers in in uh in transfer stations to to allow them to happen um we were awarded a uh a six thousand dollar grant uh with a, and we were supposed to match four thousand dollars from local funds in order to pour a concrete pad and buy a container that would be there to eventually fill up with asphalt shingles and then we would be responsible for um figuring out who to, who would pick those up and selling them and dealing with all that um so uh you know when i talked to the folks at the state they said as long as the local contractor that we're contracting with somewhere in the district is picking up asphalt shingles it's not a problem um and uh and so i spoke with um dale baker at casella and he said, you know, while they do not have a um, uh, a dedicated um, <laughs> a dedicated spot there now, if there's ever interest, they'll say yes, and they have a price, uh, you know. And it's it is a uh, and and if it ever gets required by the state, they will put something at the Bennington transfer station that meets that requirement without us having to, you know, install our own concrete pad and containers. So. Um, you know, when I, when I, Stu and I spoke about this uh, a few weeks ago, and you know, that just seems like we, we don't need to take this grant and to do this if we don't want to. Um, so I just want to confirm and let everyone know that that's sort of what we're doing right now. Uh, you know, we, you know, I, I reached out to the state and told them we probably will, you know, be declining the offer. Um, but you know, if we want to do this, this is kind of our last opportunity because I have to. Um, you know, I have to get back to them before June and confirm uh, that we do or do not want this to, to these funds. But uh, just to be clear, is that is that uh, we do we do we probably need a motion or something to not accept the grant, um, or maybe not? I, I don't know. Just if it's something to, yeah, I think we should. 
have a motion and discussion with any folks that are yeah have some thoughts on that. Um, and I'd make a motion we return the grant funds or re reject the grant funds. Second. second. I'll say. Uh, Nancy second. seconded it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, if everyone's feeling that's the uh, right thing to do, anybody think we should keep that grant money? And all right. Um, nope. Okay. We have a motion that we will turn that grant back. Um, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, unanimous. Okay, Thank you. Excellent. Uh, great. Uh, next uh, item on the agenda is uh, public collection containers and food scraps. Uh, Paula wanted to uh, go over some information about uh, about what the town should be doing. You know, now that the weather's warm and uh, everybody's putting their garbage cans back out in their parks and uh, on Main Street, uh, what sort of best practices are? So, if you want to go. Yeah, I just want to revisit what I covered last October, um, getting everybody on board with coordinating with anyone that wants to use their public spaces for events, whether it be a large family reunion or something more large scale to make sure that we're providing or at least coordinating with the um, vendor or whoever you're using um, to grant your granting permit access to the property to do food waste diversion proper recycling and waste collection. Whether you leave it up to the person that's using the space or you're providing receptacles just so that it's lined out. I did provide some sample verbiage to use for uh, use permitting practices. Um, I also mentioned we do have bin signs we can give to the uh, organizations that we can make available or to the town or entity that's leasing out the space to the user to make sure we try to get good clean collection that isn't contaminated but um, i'm making my way into uh, the inboxes of a lot of organizers of events this year now that people are starting to loosen up and make optimistic hopefully plans to get back in into planning events outdoors again uh, this next year to try to get ahead of their planning calendars to see what we can do to get that set up Ideally, we would like to be able to hit, you know, get a cadre of volunteers at some point to be able to be available to community groups and um, those that want to use it to help sort waste like they do at Garlic Town, uh, Garlic Fest, which has been successful in years past, uh, but try to roll that model out in a larger force. And uh, Scott and I have been talking about it just in the last meeting we had this week to try to find maybe an out outreach of a not-for-profit social organization that is looking to do a community service project um, because the people that are doing it for Garlic Town largely are retirees and uh, their capacity is limited for what they have for time um, and resources since it is a small group and they can't do it for every event, but we can see what we can find for other uh, organizations that might be interested. Also, if you could just shoot me a quick email, if you know there are new events popping up that are coming uh, into your locations in your cities that we don't know about right now that are either new developing or returning after a couple of years hiatus, I <clears throat> try to check websites and <clears throat> social media accounts to see what's coming about. Like I see Mayfest is starting up again, which is great. Mm -hmm. And I'll be talking to them to try to see what we can do to coordinate their waste management. But um, please just keep me abreast so I don't miss anything because I'd like to try to, the last thing I want to do is show up the day of the event and say, you're not sorting trash and that's too late. <laughs> we want to try and get ahead of the time frame that they have for planning. So it's not such a, um, a mess in the end. So that and talk to haulers as well that provide the services, so. Yeah, Paula, you should, you should talk with Jenny Dewar at the BBC. Uh, they're planning a fall event similar to Mayfest. They're planning a tag sale event uh, sometime in, uh, I think it's in August. Uh, and they're going to have, um, Hemmings is bringing their um, car, car enthusiast groups to the downtown four times uh, this year uh, mm -hmm. in the evening. So you may want to, you need to talk with her so she gets and understanding what what is appropriate for her to do great good to know now is Hemmings doing their cruisins is that what it is or is that's that yeah the cruising I okay. couldn't come up with the name but yes okay. Hemmings is and it's in concert with the BBC so she's oh great okay organizing it and uh, they'll be we'll be closing off the the 
center block there just off the four corners to bring the cars downtown. Cool. Wonderful. Thanks for the heads up. I'll get in touch with her. That's all I have. Great. Um, okay, next item on the list is uh, North Shire recycling sticker fees. Um, uh, it is a uh, the, the word overcharge is uh, incorrect. Um, just want to say that out, to out, out go. That is a bad uh, agenda item name, uh, especially because uh, as I um, uh, went over the contract uh, a second time, uh, there's just some confusing um, language effectively in the contract where in one section it says uh, they only shall implement fees that we specifically outline in an attachment. And then in uh, a later section, it does give um, does give Casella the right to charge basically like a, a shipping and handling fee as well uh, in the North Shire facility. So, um, you know, they, they, they never planned on not charging that additional um, uh, $5 fee. And because we outlined specifically uh, $15 uh, this year for them to start collecting, everyone is being, being charged $20 at the gate at the North Shire facility. Um, we did that that has been a little bit confusing uh, was confusing to me but is also confusing to the public uh, especially because it was mislabeled on our website at the BCSWA as being you know should, the fees should be fifteen dollars so um, again I went over the contract again with the folks at Casella um, it it is um, it is within their right to be able to, to continue to charge that fee um, and uh, you know I'll just be updating the website on that. Um, you know, I guess the question is then we have a, an additional $5 schedule to go in next year. Uh, so it's supposed to be $15 and 20, you know, 22 and $20, you know, in, in 2023. Um, so that was, uh, so it will be $25 next year for people to get their sticker. Um, and that is uh, just want to make sure that's also something that the board wants to continue uh, while we're talking about this right now. Um, does that make sense? What I just said to everyone? I'm sorry, that may have been a. It does to me. I had some complaints to folks saying, I didn't know <laughs> things were going up. And they yeah, were surprised that it was such a jump. But uh, I don't know. Would you get any comments or. Well, I, I'm not in. He's, he's not in. Uh, so this is just it's only the North Shire uh, station, yeah. And, and that North contract with Casella. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, they're on a different. Uh, yeah, they had a, a few comments, but uh, yeah, Scott, I this got it. It's Rob endorsed it. I think that's a pretty good care, uh, summary of of what has transpired. I think in our defense, it wasn't implied that Casella was going to keep the. Keep charging the five bucks. I think that's where we kind of missed yeah. the, missed the boat there. So I, I think the problem is there's no way to sort of undo it at this point. Um, it may have been that we could have, you know, if we had gotten a heads up and it was made clear earlier. But um, uh, yeah, I guess the question is, do we want to potentially look into changing that for next year, or do we want to keep it the schedule where we're going to be raised, um, or just maybe not? You know, we could think about that later. But um, uh, you know, we will be getting that money uh, from Casella to us soon. They're going to give us one big check for that money. Um, whatever they collect quarterly is going to come to us. So it's April. We should be getting the first one soon. Um, and then that money will then be applied to those uh, I swap billing that we do for the North Shire towns. Um, and uh, we'll sort of give you guys credit based on that money, which is going to be paid directly uh, to BCRC. Um, and that'll help overall lower your town payments uh, for the recycling in general. But um, but if there's, uh, just so everybody knows that, that that is kind of what the situation was. If there are any other questions about it, that's fine. And if we're okay with uh, just clarifying the information uh, publicly on all of our town and uh, BCSWA websites, then we can just go ahead and, and do that. And that'll be the easiest way to handle everything. I'm fine keeping it the way it is. Okay. Same here. Great. Um, might as well bring up the article too now. Uh, we did get some coverage for the increases in the banner um, uh, on Thursday of last week. Um, if anybody's interested in looking that up, they can look it up on the banner website or I have a copy here. I can email it around. Um, but it just, uh, it's called County Towns Brace for Solid Waste Cost Hikes. 
It's largely due to the inflation rates um, that come every April, but how people are feeling them a little more because of the um, because of the inflation uh, and fuel costs have gone up a lot more this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We look at uh, they're going to increase us seventy dollars a fuel. It's a twelve mile round trip. You take it from my, my transfer station down to theirs at the lower end of town, twenty six miles. We have a problem. <laughs> so we got we got straight now. So all right. You know, okay. So uh, I mean, I thought that so I, they've been charging you a, a mile extra for for yeah. trip. Well, they're going to charge you seventy dollars more for trip. Yeah. No, that's that's not fair. I was paying one hundred eighty, so I'll, I'll pay two hundred now. Wow. Yes, it's still too much. Yeah. But when do you have your contract negotiation with them? We don't really have a contract. It's just it's over. It's over. It's just open. You never never had any contract with, with Trevor. You just kept on going. There's not much negotiating with Casella unless you're Stu, I guess. That's about the yeah. the rest. <laughs> I'm not sure I have much luck with that either. Oh, but. yeah. He just he's got more volume, I guess. But yes, yeah. that's true. Still and I'm actually meeting with uh, the Casella folks tomorrow morning to talk a little bit about things down here. Okay. Right. Um, so you can mention the hazardous waste facility permanent permanent construction there. Um, they should all be all aware. I sort of talked to everybody up, up that way, but you, they, should, they should be aware too. Um, okay, then great. So uh, that's that's catching everybody up to date on the North Shore recycling fee. Uh, the next item is a possible stop polystyrene program. Um, polystyrene or styrofoam is a um, you know almost impossible to recycle a uh, waste item uh, due to the fact that it just weighs so little. Um, there is a, uh, a compression uh, item that exists now that uh, both heats and compresses simultaneously to allow blocks of polystyrene to be uh, become economical enough for uh, local municipal waste uh, agencies potentially uh, if they can collect enough of them. Um, there is a program that the Northeast Kingdom is doing, and um, and they are sort of uh, they are testing to see the profitability of this. Um, but meanwhile, as that is happening, um, Windsor and Wyndham, Wyndham County uh, Solid Waste District uh, has been working with uh, folks who, all, who who successfully ran something out in uh, Lebanon and, and Cornish, New Hampshire, um, to to do sort of a, a test run to see how much demand there might be for uh, polystyrene collection in their areas. Um, and uh, they were, they're working specifically with the local rotaries um, the, and, uh, and, and the rotary district governor from uh, Southern New Hampshire and Vermont, which in the rotary districts is that the same agent, same group. Um, they've asked us if we might be interested in participating as well to do sort of a collection event in the fall of this year, uh, just to gauge kind of what the, you know, potential market might be for, for installing a machine somewhere in the region that would do compression. Um, polystyrene itself is not served in restaurants anymore. You know, you, you know, styrofoam really all comes in basically from out of state, you know, into, uh, into into everyone's homes via Amazon packages. Uh, so there isn't a lot of local production or local uh, purchasing of style polystyrene going on. And we're not really sure what the actual you know demand might be for, for creating a recycling program around it. Um, this is a completely optional thing and it's you know just a question as to whether this is uh, this is a request that's been made to us and whether it's worth us putting some of our staff time in towards it and just our general mental resources. Um, the Rotary, from my understanding, at least the way it was operated when they did it in New Hampshire, you know, did do a lot of the legwork um, and did um, did take the foam and drive it down to a collection facility in Massachusetts um, outside of Springfield uh, at their own dime. Um, so that is a, you know, there there is 
there's no I that there's, I've been promised that it won't cost us anything as far as that goes. But uh, the question is again, is is it something that we're interested in potentially participating in, or you just kind of want to, um, you know, uh, think, consider continue to focus on other programs or priorities at this time. If we're going to make more asks of our civic groups, I am against that. I think our civic groups, if we're going to rely on them in any way as part of a collection or even think about that in the future, should not be had another ask of them, especially coming from you know, a new angle that they're not interested in right now. Um, some of them are already doing some kind of recycling work already. So I don't know, I'm generally opposed to something like this because I don't want to create more kind of ongoing things from our civic society. And I've seen a huge uh, shift from styrofoam to bubble wrap. Now it's all recycled paper. Yeah. It's all the packaging. I've, I've, I've seen that. I've seen that. Or, so. Yeah, and and styrofoam is, is a very minor part of what we deal with there. And even even home, very rarely mm -hmm. do things come in. Occasionally there'll be in something very fragile that will come in the styrofoam. But um, well, I've the, seen that big thing with me is TVs, electronics, people come in with the box and oh. put, put it in the cardboard. But you get to take a shower from it. Yeah. No, well, it's just glued on there. So cut it off. Yeah. 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 Supposed yeah. to have a flat bed anyhow, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's one thing. Let me sell them to the coach. Yeah. You know, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, I think who's taking their paper and screw it up. You know? My suggestion would be look at these other. Facilities see if they're generating a lot, and because uh, I don't know <clears throat> yeah, specifically what Casella sees for that um, for styrofoam, if they see a lot of that. I, yeah, I mean, I imagine it's similar to what he's getting down there in Palm. Yeah, so that's trash. I agree with Nick. We should put it on hold for us at yeah. this point. Okay, great. I'll uh, I'll, I'll get back to them and I'll let them know that we are not uh, interested in participating at this time. And uh, but we are interested in getting the data when they're done with their events. Yeah, yeah. yeah we like to see, we like to see what yeah. you guys did it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to spend our money on it. All right, that sounds that sounds good. I think approving is probably more of a demand around here than styrofoam. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and there is a recycling program in the state for it. Maybe get somebody to schlep it up there. <laughs> Okay, great. So uh, that is the end of all the uh, items on the agenda. I have one thing that I talked to um, Scott about a little bit um, when he was at Abacus. And, you know, when I moved to Vermont in 1974 and lived in Shaftesbury, we drove down Big Hill into a pit and dumped all our trash. When I left, they had closed the facility and we have Mount Shaftesbury now that used to be our landfill. And all the local towns, as we know now, we're all transferring this stuff. And there will be a date where we can't bring any more trash up the uh, north, uh, northeastern Vermont. And it's something that I would just, I'm interested in at least looking at the future. Is there something we can do? It, you know, we're going to, we're going to be shipping this, putting it on trains and shipping it to Ohio or something that, um, it, and that we're creating quite a mountain uh, up north, and uh, it, there will be a day where we can't go any higher. So it's just something that I, you know, I'm not asking for any action now, but some thought, and you know, our probably won't concern me that much, but my kids and their kids, they have to deal with trash, and it still blows my mind when you think of. Uh, New York City and how they deal with all their trash. And here we're a little tiny state and we're we can't figure a good place to put our trash. So it's uh it's a huge concern for me personally. I think it's something that uh it was kind of shocking to see all the little landfills fill up so quickly in Vermont. So, but anyway, it's just a thought to throw out there and maybe someday we can have a discussion on on thoughts and generate something with the state or whatever to, to, to work on. What's next? Uh, yeah, on that on that note, uh, that that does kind of come up with upcoming meetings and events uh, potentially. Um, you know, we were also talking about uh, when I met with Dixie and Paula earlier. Uh, they they had both mentioned that there was a uh, a planned tour of the um, 
of, of the Murph uh, up in Rutland that the Casella runs. Um, but then, of course, that got disrupted by by COVID and never replanned. Um, that's something we could uh, try to do an outing. Uh, you know, if the if the if the board is interested in, or, or if you know more than two of you or or, or you know uh, are, are interested in doing this, I'm happy to organize uh, a visit uh, up there just to see how the facility operates and you know all the gadgets that they're using to sort the trash and everything like that. Um, so that would be interesting. And then if enough people are interested, we could maybe even, you know, co-locate that with some kind of, um, you know, renting a room at a, you know, at a hotel or a part of a restaurant out for an afternoon and maybe doing some kind of a visioning or education session as well uh, on the kind of stuff that, that Dixie was just talking about now. Um, so if that's something that might interest people, um, let me know. Um, we, have, we can chat about it now i guess or we can or if you can you can think about it and maybe email me later um but uh you know we could probably organize something for you know this summer if possible if that's what people are interested in doing point of order touring a murph in the dead of summer really isn't a pleasant experience oh. <laughs> in the fall <laughs> november yeah, January, probably January. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I know it's uh, like I said, Alexandria, when I went down to their transfer station, they have uh, maybe three or four huge stacks. It's an incinerator power plant. They have, they have one in Pittsfield. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, that, that's, a, that's an alternative. And if, if they get good enough scrubbers on there, you're not really going to be doing pollution. You save the stuff out. You can burn, you, you can bury the dust a hell of a lot cheaper. You can bury mountain of garbage. Yeah, absolutely. You know, but I, but I, I was absolutely impressed down there. I mean, they were bringing tractor trailer loads just one after another, just boom, boom, boom. And they were just going in there and they, they had the three of them running. There was, there was three stacks running. They were, and are those oil fire, gas fire? Burning, burning the garbage. I mean, but it's so they, they, they might have gas because they probably get something that doesn't wait. Yeah. Not that far. They got some big. They got they got some big lines run in Pennsylvania down down that area. So they just ran one through my my old town about uh, three years ago. So it was heading down to Maryland, you know, Maryland, Virginia. So um, I would definitely be interested in a trip up there. And I don't know if anyone else is, but uh, you could and. I could brave the summer if it had to be. <laughs> that, well, that's kind yeah. of good point. No, that, that is a good point. We, we could definitely yeah. postpone it to. Uh, yeah. I've, I've been there in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> yep. yeah. Good thing. And people work on that line all day long. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, okay, great then. Any uh, other public comments? All right. Great. Upcoming meetings. Um, so yeah, we, we do need to go over uh, a budget, uh, for before, um, before July 1st, we need to have, uh, I need to present you guys with a budget and, uh, have you guys vote on that. Um, that approval of the budget every year is also a renewal of the, uh, five-year contract that you, that you have with BCRC, um, and to have us continue to be the program managers. Um, so just letting you know that that is that the main um, agenda item that would be coming up. And it could be a, a pretty focused and short meeting. Um, possible dates, uh, you know, maybe May 25th, June 1st, or June 8th, if um, if we want to continue to have it on Wednesday. Um, but otherwise, uh, you know, let me know what might be good for you guys. What were the dates in June? Did you say? Um, May 25th, June 1st, or June 8th? I'll throw Ken Bibley out June 1st as a first preference. Yes. All of those days work for me. Me too. Okay, so let's stick with June 1st then as the Sure. As the next date, and uh, we'll put that together. Six one, six one twenty two. Yep. Not twenty one. Miss it. 
All right, then. Uh, if there's any other business or any other problems, then we can probably can call the meeting to close. Motion to adjourn. Close the meeting. Motion, Motion made by Stu. Everyone in favor? Say aye. 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 Thank you, everybody, aye. for joining. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Nice See to meet you, Rob Scott. See you in June.